Okay, hello everyone and good morning. Uh, my name's Morgan, I've come here from the University of Greifswald in Northeastern Germany. Um, and I'm very excited to speak with you today and, and uh, show you what I've been working on in terms of variability of vibratory performance during courtship of a cursorial spider. So as we all know, arachnids as a taxa are very sensitive to substrate vibrations. And web building spiders might come to mind first because um, we know that they sense a lot of vibrations on the web while they're doing prey capture or reproduction. But as we just l learned from Eileen, um, it's also very important for cursorial spiders to detect substrate vibrations during reproduction, prey capture, and especially uh, species recognition. And one really good example of this is my study species. This is Pissara mirabilis. Um, they are very well studied for their mating system. They have a pretty complex multimodal courtship situation happening. And the uh, most well studied part of this is the nuptial gift. So they have, I don't maybe you can see the cursor here. Yeah, so this thing that the male spider is holding in his mouth parts is a nuptial gift. It's a prey item that he's captured and he's wrapped it up like a present and he takes that around to present to female spiders in order to attract them. Um, so the, the gift itself, plus the silk that it's wrapped in, they provide chemical and visual stimuli during the courtship process, but there's also vibrational stimuli, of course, and this is a lot less well studied. Um, oh, sorry. So they, they do a low frequency pulse vibration um, during the courtship signaling. Um, which they, they, they do this in, um, sorry, I'm trying to do this for the first time without the notes. <laughs> so they're, they're doing these pulses generated by tremulation of the epistosoma, and they happen during a, a walkie, a, a forward movement where they're walking, and they're, they're tremulating the epistosoma. Um, and just to show you exactly how this looks in the courtship, so, uh, the male will catch the gift, he'll start wrapping it up, and then he'll take it in his mouth parts and start searching for a female, and this is the part of the courtship where the vibrations happen, when he is searching and hoping to attract a female to him. Uh, and then once he finds a female, he comes into contact with her, he'll offer her the gift. If she accepts it, she'll also grab it in her mouth parts and she'll start feeding on it. And then while she's sort of distracted, feeding on the gift, he will do a 180 and start um, transferring sperm. So that's what it looks like in context. Uh, but back to the vibration, the things that we know about this courtship vibration is that they are costly to produce uh, and they're therefore in, uh, honest indicators of male quality. They're also condition dependent, so a recent study found that males in good condition produced more pulses in their vibration than males in poor condition. And they're also likely to influence female choice. That same study that I mentioned, they found that the males that were in good condition, doing better vibrations, um, they were also more likely to secure copulations. So I started my PhD in this past February. I had lots of plans for um, experiments to te test the functional role of vibration within this spider's mating system. But before I got started on too many uh, experiments, I had a few questions that I wanted to answer. The first was, is there enough between individual variation to distinguish between males? And coming off of that, um, could males be categorized into high signaling and low signaling groups based on their vibratory performance? And finally, um, I wanted to know if the within individual variation was low enough to indicate that these vibrational sig signals are reliable. So in order to do this, I um, I did some screenings of male vibratory performance. I conducted three five-minute trials per individual, and there were um, 150 individuals that I collected from my area of northeastern Germany. And in these trials, the vibrational courtship behavior was stimulated by fresh female silk. So during the entire trial, generally, the males were doing um, the courtship vibrations pretty much the entire time. And here's a little look into the lab setup that I had. I had a recording stage, um, which I made from a plastic construction pipe covered with nylon fabric. Uh, the ring of plastic sheeting and black paper keeps the spider from escaping and also keeps him from getting distracted by his environment or any movement in the area. Uh, the recording stage is also sitting in a box of sand, which helps to diffuse some vibrations that might come up from the floor. Uh, I was taking video recordings 
and of course vibrational recordings with a Polytech portable vibrometer. And last but not least, I had several hundred spiders to work with. And so this is what the trials look like from the camera view. So you can see the male has the um, nuptial gift in, in his mouth parts and he's carrying it around and just sort of doing this jerky movement. Um, if you look really closely at, at his uh, epistosoma, you can kind of see it tremulating. It's a bit hard from this vantage point, but that it's, it's a much more simple vibration than some of the ones we saw before. Um, it's really just this tremulation uh, in pulses. And so that's what it looks like when the male is doing his courtship signaling. So once I collected all of those recordings, I uh, analyzed them with Avisoft uh, bioacoustic software and I used the pulse train analysis feature. And I really like this pulse train analysis feature, so I just wanted to highlight it really quickly. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, basically, there are a lot of parameters and settings that you can choose to help you um, analyze the recordings. Um, first, the program generates an envelope and then it does a uh, there's some way it does pulse detection. In my case, I used a gate function. So I set this, this horizontal line here at um, 15 millivolts is basically um, how the program is detecting anything that goes over that amplitude it gets detected as a pulse. And you can see some of them up here at the top there in the red brackets. So each of those is the specific pulse. And then once it has all of the pulses detected, it can uh, generate lots of different uh, measurements for you. So I had calculated the, the pulse duration, interval, amplitude, and peak frequency. And the reason I really like this program is because you can collect a lot of data really quickly. In my case, my goal is to screen the males and determine their vibratory quality and then very quickly use them in some subsequent mating trials before they change condition or get too old or something like that. So for me, it's really important to be able to really quickly get some sort of measurement of their quality. So I just wanted to highlight that uh, program. And I'll talk a bit more later about the future mating plans that I have, but yeah. So once I calculated the measurements from, from those recordings, I uh, calculated a vibratory performance rank that consists of just temporal measurements, the pulse, inter uh, pulse rate, and the pulse interval consistency, which I measured by a coefficient of variation, just the standard deviation divided by the um, mean of the pulse interval length. Um, and both of these temporal measurements are known to be uh, important to female choice. So the results of this allow me to inspect the, the scope of the vibratory quality in my sample. Um, we have, in this graph, each dot represents an individual. On the x-axis, we have the pulse rate, and on the y-axis, we have this pulse interval CV consistency measurement, and the color of the dots represent the rank of each individual. And so in the top left of the screen, these individuals in blue, they have a lower pulse rate and a higher pulse interval CV, meaning that their pulse intervals are longer and more inconsistent. Um, they might look something like this um, blue waveform. But the individuals on the bottom right in red, they're considered high signalers. They have a higher pulse rate and a low pulse interval CV, which means that the pulse intervals are shorter and more consistent. So you can see there's quite a difference in between the waveforms here. Um, and the red one is what the females prefer, definitely. And looking back at the plot, you can see there's quite a bit of variation uh, between these two individuals and a lot of variation also in between with the different colors. Um, but also we want to make sure we're considering the variability and repeatability of both within and between individual variation. So here are some values of within and between individual variation. Um, they're both CV values. Um, but I wanted to assess this using a variability ratio. This is a super simple ratio, just the within individual variation divided by the between individual variation. And this is what it looks like plotted. I still needed some help interpreting this graph. so. Um, the, any value that's greater than one just means that the within individual variation is greater than the between individual variation. And for studying behavior, that's not super helpful. That means that either the individuals did not have very consistent behaviors or that the entire sample didn't have enough variation in it. Um, but on the other hand, when the ratio is less than one, that means that the, inter that the individuals had quite consistent measurements of their behavior and the entire sample did have variation between individuals. 
So as we can see on this graph for the pulse interval CV, the majority of the sample was concentrated just below one. Um, and then for the pulse rate, there's a, a wider spread, but even more of the sample was in this below one area. Um, and so even though pulse rate seems a bit more um, better to use than pulse interval CV, I, I think that both, both of these measurements are um, potentially invariable enough that we can use them as individual markers in these male spiders. So to look back at the questions that I had, we did find that there was um, between individual variation enough to distinguish between the males. And if we think back to those red versus blue individuals, I was able to categorize males into high quality and low quality groups based on their vibrational performance. And I also saw low within individual variation indicating that the signals are quite reliable for these individuals. And again, why did I go to the trouble to look at all of this? Well, I have a lot of future experiments planned. Um, the first one, that, or the, the one that I'll tell you about today is my next step in this project and it will be some mating experiments. So I'll take a single female spider and I'll mate her twice in succession, one time with a low signaling spider and once with a high signaling spider. And the sequence of these matings will be randomized because there is some um, order effect in, the, in these spiders. Um, but during the mating experiments, I will record their pre-mating preference behaviors. So these are things like latency to contact, the latency to the female accepting the nuptial gift of the male, uh, latency to copulation, and then duration of copulation. This is really important in these spiders because that's directly related to the amount of sperm transferred. And then the females will create an egg sac and these, uh, these female spiders mate multiply, so the spiderlings within the egg sac will have, um, they will be fathered by both of the male spiders, a mixed brood egg sac. So I will then be molecularly testing the, the relative paternity of these egg sacs to see if perhaps one male versus the other had more relative paternity, indicating the post-mating female preference. So overall, the, the idea of this future experiment is to compare the pre and post mating female preferences in relation to the uh, vibrational performance of the male spiders. So I hope I can uh, show some data at the next conference about how females react to the, the male's vibratory performance. And with that, I would like to thank my advisors, especially Dr. Monica Eberhard, who has joined us on Zoom and um, some of my lab mates and the technical staff at the University of Greifswald. And of course, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to do my best to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.